Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and hello everyone. In this video, we'll still be covering subtopic 7.1 Acids and Bases. We will learn about sol buffer solutions and Henderson Hasselbalch equations. Reactions between acids and bases will produce salts. With any combinations of acids and bases we have learned in previous video in terms of their strength, strong or weak species will also produce salts. Salts can only be formed when there is at least one strong species present in the reactions. It can also be both strong, but it can never be both weak. There are three types of salts you need to know. The first one is acidic salts. Acidic salt is formed when strong acid to react with weak base. For example, we have weak base of ammonia to react with strong acid of HCl. We take only the conjugate pair to form the salts, so the conjugate of base NH3 will be NH4+, while conjugate of acid HCl going to be Cl-, hence salt of NH4Cl is formed. Since stronger acid is used, means the salt is acidic with pH less than 7. If strong base sodium hydroxide, we take only the sodium ion, and then weak acid of ethanoic acid, let's say we have the CH3COO- acids conjugate pair, then the sodium acetate of CH3COONA will be formed. So this sodium acetate is a basic salt with pH greater than 7 due to the strong base present in here. And lastly, if both strong acid, we have Cl- comes from the HCl, and then the strong base, we got it from sodium hydroxide, we take only the Na+, they react together, then the neutral salt of NaCl will produce pH equal to 7. Type of salts can be determined experimentally via a reaction called salt hydrolysis. Salt hydrolysis is a reaction in which salts react with water. Basically, both acidic and basic salts will have ions that are capable to perform hydrolysis in aqueous solutions. The criteria for ions to undergo hydrolysis is they originated from weak species. Why must weak species? If we recall the dissociations of weak species, it will undergo only partial dissociations. Hence, there are still traces of reactants left for the react with water. Let's use this acidic salts we have discussed earlier. We know acidic salts formed from the strong acid and also the weak base. So we're going to take the conjugate species of weak base, which is the NH4+, to further react with water. Since this NH4+, comes from weak species, and reactions with water is only mild, therefore we will keep the partial dissociations in here represented by this reversible arrow. Once the ion undergo hydrolysis with water molecule, then the pH value of a solution can be determined as these reactions will form either acidic characterized by H plus or basic solutions characterized by the OH minus ions. Here are the three steps above whenever you are asked to determine the type of salts or pH of salts. All of these questions will lead to salt hydrolysis reactions. Since you'll be given salts, so we'll first do the salt dissociations. From these dissociation steps, we get to know which ions belongs to strong or weak species. This step will require single directions arrow because salt has high proportions of strong species, which in this case, acid. So you will see, even at the second step, you will still have that character of strong species. So this NH4 plus is the conjugate pair of weak base, while this Cl minus is the conjugate pair of strong acid. Species that dissociate partially from its initial solutions, which in this case the weak base, will be the one that undergo hydrolysis with water. So we'll take this NH4+, which is the conjugate acid, to react with water molecule to form its original base we use in here, which is the weak base, and together with this H3O+. Note that this H3O+, indicates that this salt is still got acidic character. And lastly, we need to give some reasoning based on the second step. Since we have this H3O plus present in our salt hydrolysis reactions, it means that the pH of the salt solutions is going to be less than 7. So that's how you jump to a conclusion, what kind of salt to be formed and also its pH. Now we'll move on to the next part, where salt is used as part of a solution called buffer. 
So this buffer solution is a solution that has the ability to maintain its pH when a small amount of either strong acid or strong base is added to it. Let's try to illustrate what is this buffer solution by using diagram. Say we have a beaker containing a solution and then we put some universal indicator in it as to see any changes in the color of solutions when adding acids or bases. So the solutions now has a neutral pH of around 7. If let's say we're going to add an amount of acid usually denoted by H+, the universal indicator will change the color of solutions to become red, indicating that the solution is now acidic. Whereas if an amount of base usually denoted by OH- is added, the universal indicator will change the color of solutions to become blue, indicating the solution now is basic. However, if we have a buffer solution in the beaker, we will expect the color will remain unchanged even if the acids or bases is added. Let's first look at the components that make up these buffer solutions. The first component will be weak acid or weak base. Let's say we use an example of weak acid CH3COOH. Then the second component will be its conjugate pair. If we have a weak acid, means its conjugate pair will be a base species that loses hydrogen. So we would left with CH3COO minus. But since it should be in the form of salt in terms of this conjugate pair, therefore we're going to have the CH3COONA. So here we got acidic buffer solutions in our beaker. If we add just a small amount of strong acid or strong base into this acidic buffer solution, the universal indicator won't change the color of solutions to become either red or blue, just like the one we did before. In other words, the pH hasn't really changed. This is because both acid and also its conjugate base are present. So they are able to neutralize any small amount of strong acid or strong base added to the solutions. Apart from knowing their components, you must also know the types of buffer solutions. So the example we have here is called acidic buffer because its component comprises of weak acid comes from the CH3COOH and then the conjugate base salts comes from the CH3COONA. Another type will be basic buffer solutions where a solution is containing weak base. Weak base in our case now is NH3 and then the conjugate acid salt will be this NH4Cl. So same concept discussed earlier applied to this basic buffer as well. Combining both ethanoic acid, which is the weak acid, and also the sodium acetate, which is the conjugate base salt, make up this acidic buffer solution. Each of these components will first dissociate to finally take part in buffer actions. The salts comes from CH3COONA will provide a very high concentration of CH3COO- due to complete dissociation, so we could see from this single direction arrow. While for the weak acid CH3COOH, the solution is still got high concentrations of CH3COOH due to very little CH3COOH dissociated. How do we know this? By looking at these reactions, we have these partial dissociations taking place. So now, between these two desired species, either through CH3COOH or CH3COO-, who will be selected to undergo hydrolysis with water? Only one of them, which is the CH3COO-, will be selected. Why CH3COO-? This is due to the large amount formed from these two dissociations. If you could see, both dissociations reactions will form CH3COO-. Therefore, CH3COO- is capable to further react with water. So we're going to form another chemical reaction showing hydrolysis of conjugate salts, where both species in buffer solutions are relying on one another. We have the CH3COO- to react with H2O using this reversible arrow. Then we'll get the CH3COOH and also OH-. So we're going to take only these final reactions to discuss further about buffers action. Combining both ammonia, which is the weak base, and also the ammonium chloride, the conjugate acid salts, make up a basic buffer solution. 
So each of these components will first dissociate, just like the previous one, to finally take part in the buffer's actions we're going to discuss after this. So the salts comes from NH4Cl, will provide a high concentrations of NH4 plus from these complete dissociations. Whereas for the weak base NH3, the concentrations of NH3 is still high due to very little NH3 dissociated comes from this reversible arrow since this ammonia is a weak base. So it dissociates only partially. We're going to take only one species out of these two, either NH3 or NH plus to undergo further reactions with water. So we're going to take this NH4 plus because we got an amount of them compared to NH3. Now we're going to react them with water to finally form these final reactions between NH4 plus with water to give NH3 and H3O plus. So we could see both species now are relying on one another in just one reaction. Buffer's actions only works up to a point which is in limited amount. If you add too much of strong acid or strong base, it won't keep working. Let's see how this basic buffer solutions comprises of ammonia and ammonium chloride try to resist the pH change. For the first situations, we're going to add a small amount of strong acid. Since we have this acid, means the neutralization reactions will take place with the species that is completely opposite to this acid, which is the base. So NH3 will try to neutralize the H3O plus added to these solutions. So the neutralization reactions will look like this. NH3 to react with H3O plus to form NH4 plus together with water. So these neutralization reactions will form salts and water. Therefore, complete dissociation takes place. But remember, NH3 is a weak base. We are not going to get very many of NH4+, even though the amount of NH4 plus will increase a little. An increased amount of NH4 plus will cause the positions of equilibrium to shift to the left to replace the NH3 used in the neutralization reactions. Although there will be shift to replace NH3 use, there isn't going to have very much effect on the pH. That's why the color of the solutions remain unchanged, as so this pH of solutions. The second situation will be you add a small amount of strong base to the mixture of ammonia and ammonium chloride. Since we are going to introduce base, means the one that will neutralize is going to be the acid, which in this case, the NH4+, the conjugate acid. So neutralization reactions perform complete dissociations, hence single directions arrow forming more NH3. Even though more NH3 formed, since it's just a weak base, a small degree of dissociations will not affect the pH of solutions that much. So the same concept will be applied if you're about to deal with acidic buffer solutions. Always form the hydrolysis equations in here, then look for the species that we're going to react to, whether acids or base. And then the species that will neutralize will be the complete opposite to the species that we're going to introduce. Buffer solutions of a particular pH can be prepared by using henderson hasselbalch equations. Since we've already learned the compositions of buffer solutions, therefore, for any weak species, either acid or base, the dissociation equations together with Ka or Kb expressions are required in the calculations of pH. So this henderson hasselbalch equations is formed by first rearranging the Ka or Kb expressions until the desired species, either H3O plus or OH minus, is kept on the left-hand side. Since our example now dealing with weak acid, then we're going to keep only H plus or H3O plus on the left-hand side, while on the right, we're going to have Ka times with the concentrations of weak acid divided by concentrations of its conjugate pair, which in this case, the conjugate base. Once we have rearranged into this, then we're going to apply negative log on both sides of these equations. So this negative log will give the inverse relationship to the value substituted in these equations. Applying negative log will also change the symbol used wherever applicable. For instance, from previous substitutions, we're going to have negative log H2O plus, they can be changed to pH. For negative log Ka, we can change it to pKa. 
As for the log concentrations, we got no other symbol to be substituted. But since we want to keep this plus symbol, then we can swap place of this conjugate salt to become the nominator, while the weak species to become the denominator. As for weak base, Henderson has about equations will give an expression in terms of POH and PKB, exactly the same as in the pH equations. And as for the log concentrations, we're going to have its conjugate acid on the nominator part, while this weak base for the denominator part. Let's try this example to check your understanding regarding how buffer solutions works together with its calculations on the pH or pOH. So a student is required to prepare a buffer solution containing 0.20 molar CH3COOH and 0.3 molar CH3COONA. So you are given buffer solutions with these two components. You need to identify what is this. This is a weak acid and this is going to be its conjugate with salt. So we have these two combinations means this is going to be an acidic buffer solution. Another hint given is Ka value. This Ka belongs to only acid. So the Ka value given is 1.8 10 to the power of negative 5. So you need to calculate the pH of the buffer solutions. In order for you to calculate the pH buffer solutions, you need to know the henderson hasselbalch equations. But wait, before you can finally calculate this pH, you need to first have the hydrolysis chemical reactions. So we're going to take only the final chemical equations that we are going to form from these two components. We know already we have to dissociate these two and then look for the largest amount of product formed that comes from the CH3COO minus. That's why this species will undergo hydrolysis and then to form the CH3COOH. So this is basically the final chemical equations we have formed. And then you are given already the concentrations of both CH3COOH, the weak acid, and also the concentrations of this conjugate base salts, then you can simply plug in into this formula. Make sure that your formula is correct. pH equal to pKa plus log concentrations of conjugate base salt divided by the weak acid. So we simply substitute the value. 0 0.3 comes from this base salt and then this 0 0.2 comes from this weak acid. Lastly, you will get the pH of buffer solutions is 4.92. Suppose if next question asks for pH of solutions after adding small amount of H plus or OH minus, the number will have no, not much difference from this 4.92. We'll see afterwards. For question B, you need to calculate the pH change if 0.015 mole of sodium hydroxide was added to 1 litre buffer solutions. So you're given number of mole together with the volume, then you can first find the molarity to indicate the amount of sodium hydroxide to be added to your solutions. You need to form a new chemical reactions. Now, since we are going to add this OH-, which is the base, means the species that going to neutralize it will be the acid. So our acid is CH3COOH to react with OH-, we undergo complete dissociations because this is a neutralization reaction. Then CH3COO minus will be formed together with the H2O liquid. Then we are going to use this ICE table again because we want to find after we have at this NaOH means the change in terms of concentrations, what will happen to the final concentrations? So now we're going to plug in the value given in these questions for the concentrations of CH3COH, it will be 0 0.20. For OH minus 0 0.015 divided by 1, you will get 0 0.015 molar. For CH3COO minus comes from the salts, we're going to have 0 0.30 molar. And for water, since it undergoes self-ionization reactions, then we're going to put a dash in here. Then, as for the change, we're going to take this as our change, the amount, the small amount of OH- to be written in here. Since this reactant will consume, will react these two, then we're going to put minus sign before then. 
So minus 0 0.015 minus 0 0.015. As for the product, because we are going to form this product, then we're going to add this 0 0.015. Again, dash for H2O. And lastly, we're going to add these two value, giving 0 0.185 for the concentrations of CH3COOH after sodium hydroxide being added. 0 for OH minus because all of them has been used up. Nothing's left because it's just a small amount. And then as for the product CH3COO minus, somehow the final concentrations will be affected to become 0 0.315, much larger from the initial concentrations. And lastly, we can take the value at this final row to be plugging into the henderson hasselbalch equations. So the pH, this Ka comes from the value given in the questions. And then this log, this one belongs to the conjugate base salts 0 0.315 divided by concentration 0 0.185 comes from this acid and lastly we're going to get 4.98 if we compare to the pH of buffer solution which is 4.92 so we can only see they have difference in terms of 0 0.06 very small in terms of their difference so that indicates that buffer solutions can maintain its pH Thank you for your attention. That's marks the end of this subtopic 7.1 acids and bases. Bye.